In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. What a great joy it is for us to gather here at St. Patrick's Cathedral, the Mother Church of the Diocese of Parramatta, in order to commend one of our brother seminarians to, um, for the grace of priestly ordination this evening. So I'd like to extend to you all a very cordial welcome. A uh, special welcome to all our um, clergy, uh, boss, uh, uh, members of the Diocese and Presbyterium, and also those visiting us from elsewhere. Among those is uh, the recently minted Secretary General of the ACBC, uh, Father Chris de Souza. And of course, uh, um, we also extend a very warm welcome to um, the um, natural family of um, the ordained, the ordinant, the green family, and uh, the young and old uh, who are here with us uh, joining in this uh, um, joyful occasion, among whom is also his brother Jack, uh, who has returned home. Uh, for this auspicious occasion. So um, to you all, uh, welcome and let's commend uh, our brother Tom for um, the grace of priestly ordination this evening. So brothers and sisters, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Gloria in excelsis Deo. And Thomas were pleased to choose as an apostle Saint Matthew the tax collector. Grant that sustained by his example and intercession, we may merit to hold firm in following you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God's forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord, a day of vengeance for our God to comfort all those who mourn and to give them 
for ashes a garland, for mourning robe the oil of gladness, for despondency praise. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. I, the prisoner in the Lord, implore you to lead a life worthy of your vocation. Bear with one another charitably in complete selflessness, gentleness, and patience. Do all you can to preserve the unity of the Spirit by the peace that binds you together. There is one body, one spirit, just as you were all called into one and the same hope when you were called. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God, who is Father of all, over all, through all, and within all. Each one of us, however, has been given his own share of grace, given as Christ allotted it. And to some, his gift was that they should be apostles, to some prophets, to some evangelists, to some pastors and teachers so that the saints together make a unity in the work of service, building up the body of Christ. In this way, we are all to come to unity in our faith and in our knowledge of the Son of God, until we become the perfect man, fully mature with the fullness of Christ himself. The word of the Lord.
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. As Jesus was walking on, he saw a man named Matthew sitting by the custom house, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was at dinner in the house, it happened that a number of tax collectors and sinners came to sit at the table with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your master eat with tax collectors and sinners? When he heard this, he replied, It is not the healthy, who need the doctor but the sick. Go and learn the meaning of the words, what I want is mercy, not sacrifice. And indeed I did not come to call the virtuous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Let Reverend Mr. Tom Green, who is to be ordained a priest, come forward. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the priesthood. After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we choose this man, our brother, Tom, for the order of the priesthood. Dear friends, it is with great joy and gratitude to God that we have come to celebrate the priestly ordination of our deacon Tom Green. We commend him for this ministry of pastoral care, service, 
and leadership in the church, which he has discerned, pursued, and prepared for during the last seven and a half years, along with fellow seminarians, especially those from our own Holy Spirit Seminary. As he himself reflected, preparing for the priesthood is not just an individual affair. It is very much a journey towards full configuration in Christ that he has walked with others, including his own family, formators, teachers, peers, and the people of God. I wish to pay tribute to his parents, Stuart and Donna Green, for giving the church two of their sons as priests, a feat that is a rare achievement these days. Thank you for nurturing, guiding, and, trust, and entrusting them to the care of the Diocese of Parramatta. It is your example of living the Catholic faith, particularly in difficult times, that has formed Jack and Tom into the persons and the instruments of God they are today. I'd like to also acknowledge the role of the formation team at Holy Spirit Seminary and many others who accompany Tom with care, love, professionalism, and dedication. I'm grateful also to the clergy and particularly the parish of Our Lady Queen of the family Blacktown who have welcomed and supported Tom during his time of pastoral placement. I want to give a big shout out to the pilgrims of the World Youth Day. Tom attributed his vocation to his experience at World Youth Day. He even performed an impromptu rap dance on the bus when he heard the news of his acceptance to priestly order. May the many fruits of Will You Stay be born in manifold among the pilgrims. The word of God on this feast day, on the feast of St. Matthew tonight, speaks of a calling to embody God's gift of love, mercy, and grace to rise to be one's true self. In Jesus, God embraces, heals, restores, dignifies, and honors the downtrodden. In him, we are called to be, in the words of Pope Francis, an, ecclesi an ecclesial community where everyone is accepted, loved, and empowered to live the good news. The first reading tells us about the call of Isaiah, which is situated in the context of the exile. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted, liberty to captives, and freedom to those in prison. Isaiah was sent to give fresh vision and hope to a people in distress. He was charged with a mission of reframing the hopeless reality into a new hopeful future for his people. This is also the task of the priest prophet in the new exile. We have to live and minister in such a way that the remnant people of God can flourish again. Our love for God and his people and our resolve to serve humbly and faithfully after the example of Christ will clear the path towards a vision of hope for all. And that is a sobering and poignant lesson for the church today. For, too we, for we to enter a kind of exile, a cultural captivity whereby we no longer enjoy the status of majority or popularity. Our task during this time of cleansing and purification is to become what we are meant to be, salts of the earth and lights of the world. 
In the midst of diminishments and even antagonism, we can learn to spread the fragrance of the gospel and to shine like the church of the catacombs. The gospel on the feast of St. Matthew highlights God's love and mercy revealed in the person and ministry of Jesus. At his invitation, follow me, Matthew has the courage to leave everything behind and risk his life for the sake of the gospel. He begins the journey of discipleship, the journey of total transformation. A sinner is transformed into a saint. It is truly a story of redemption made possible by God's offer of unconditional love. Pope Francis is fond of saying that the church is not a museum for saints, nor an enclosure for the virtuous. It is more like a field hospital which heals the wounded, strengthens the weak, and lifts up the lowly. It is the church that listens, that accompanies, that engages with people's struggles, wounds, and failings. Indeed, we cannot live our consecration fully, especially as ordained ministers, without getting ourselves immersed in the messiness of life, without going out and embracing those at the periphery. As a result, Tom, you, will, you are going to imitate Christ more perfectly in his identification with the poor and forgotten. In the sacraments of holy orders, your own heart and indeed your very being have been made one with Christ, the high priest. In the person of Christ, the head, you will utter the eye of Christ and not your own. As you offer the Eucharistic sacrifice, you will speak with the very eye of Jesus when he says, this is my body and this is the chalice of my blood. You will seek to imitate the one whose body was broken and whose blood was shed for the life of others. So Deacon Tom, we pray that Christ's self-sacrificial love, which you will celebrate daily on the altar, will nourish and strengthen you on the journey that you are about to begin. In the words of St. Paul in the second reading today, we pray that by word and example, you'll build up the body of Christ. In this way, we are all to come to unity in our faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God until we become fully mature with the fullness of Christ himself. Amen. Dear Tom, before you enter the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask, do you resolve, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to discharge without fail the office of priesthood in the presbyteral rank as a worthy fellow worker with the order of bishops in caring for the Lord's flock do you resolve to exercise the ministry of the word worthily and wisely, preaching the gospel and teaching the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate faithfully and reverently 
In accord with the church's tradition, the mysteries of Christ, especially the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the glory of God and the sanctification of the Christian people. Do you resolve to implore with us God's mercy upon the people entrusted to your care by observing the command to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely every day to Christ the High Priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? Tom, do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? My God who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us stand. My dear people, let us now pray to God, the all-powerful Father, who pour out abundantly the gifts of heaven on this his servant, whom he has chosen for the office of priest. Let us kneel. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christe eleison, Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. Holy angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Pio of Piotrolcina, pray for us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. Saint Therese of Lisieux, pray for us. Saint Maria Faustina Kowalska, pray for us. Saint Mary of the Cross Machila, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Calcutta, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, be merciful. We pray from all evil. Lord, deliver us. We pray from every 
sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to our sinners, Lord, hear us, you hear our prayer. Govern and protect your holy church, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Keep the Pope and all the ordained in faithful service to your church. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless and sanctify this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bless, sanctify, and consecrate this chosen man. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Bring all peoples together in peace and true harmony. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Comfort with your mercy the troubled and the afflicted. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Strengthen all of us and keep us in your holy service. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Hear us, we beseech you, Lord our God, and pour out on this servant of yours the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the power of priestly grace, that this man, whom in the sight of your mercy we offer to be consecrated, to be surrounded by your rich and, abund and unfailing gifts, through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand.
Draw near, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, author of human dignity. It is you who apportion all graces. Through you, everything progresses. Through you, all things are made to stand firm. To form a priestly people, you appoint ministers of Christ your Son by the power of the Holy Spirit, arranging them in different orders. Already in the earlier covenant, uh, offices arose established through mystical rites. When you set Moses and Aaron over your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in rank and dignity to accompany them and assist them in their task. So too in the desert, you implanted the spirit of Moses in the hearts of 70 wise men, and with their help, he ruled your people with greater ease. So also upon the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's plenty, that the number of the priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, who is Apostle and High Priest of our Confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself to you as a spotless victim, and he made his Apostles, consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. You provided them also with companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation throughout the whole world. And now we beseech you, Lord, in our weakness to grant us this helper that we need to exercise the priesthood that comes from the apostles. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, to this, your servant, the dignity of the priesthood to renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he henceforth possess this office which comes from you, O God, and is next in rank to the office of bishops. And by the example of his men of life, may he instill right conduct. May he be a worthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed in the waters of rebirth and nourished from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May he be joined with us, O Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to his care and for all the world. And so may the full number of the nations gathered together in Christ be transformed into your one people, made perfect in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God's forever and ever.
the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you. That you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God. Receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you do, imitate what you celebrate, and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross. Peace be with you.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate anew the memory of St. Matthew, we bring you sacrifices and prayers, O Lord, humbly imploring you to look kindly on your church, whose faith you have nourished by the preaching of the apostles, through Christ our Lord. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you have built your church to stand firm on the apostolic foundations, to be a lasting sign of your holiness on us, and offer all humanity your heavenly teaching. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for your servant, 
whom you have been pleased to raise to the order of priesthood, and in your mercy keep safe your gifts in him, so that what he has received by divine commission he may fulfill by divine assistance. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of us, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and a chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Tabor, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Mm -hmm. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, thus by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are waste of blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Check.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.